Ira, how are you doing tonight, man? Good. How are you, man? What's going on? <laughs> oh, well, as we can tell, we're doing pretty well for ourselves, but I, not really with our football team here. As What a brutal loss on Sunday. Yeah, that was not good. Um, the, the, yeah, that's one you have to kind of just scrap and forget about. But, um, yeah, when you have two weeks to prepare for a game, I'm, we're not even going to get to the offense. Yeah. When, when you know, when that, you, know, I mean, you can't have a rookie quarterback just dismantle you. I mean, what they score on nine out of ten possessions. That's right. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's just total lack of preparation and effort and coaching and players and just, you know, and that's an effort across the board. Horrible, horrible. I know that you don't like LaFleur, though, because I know when we were texting back and forth a few weeks ago, you're not a big fan of his. I heard you on the radio saying that he doesn't draw up these plays to get the ball out of Wilson's hands fast enough. And as we have saw now, Zach Wilson is now injured. Our rookie quarterback, this is the future of the franchise, is now out with a PCL injury for two to four weeks. Yeah, that's not a good thing. No. And you, what, what was even more disturbing is that, uh, you know, just watching the game up there on Sunday, when White came into the game, now listen, I'm not, there's no quarterback controversy. I'm all in on Zach Wilson. So, you know, really, you know, what I'm going to say is more about the coaching and the scheme than really Mike White. But Mike White looked a lot more comfortable in that offense, had better pocket presence, and was able to get rid of the ball and deliver the ball to short and intermediate passes where Zach doesn't. Yep. And in, in my eyes, and I brought this up on the radio, is that I think that the floor scheme doesn't fit, is, does not fit the skill sets of Wilson. No. It's as simple as that. And, you know, look at the Baltimore Ravens. Look what Greg Roman did with Lamar Jackson. You know, they, they drafted Jackson and they built a system to, to fit his skill sets. And, you know, I'll give LaFleur a little pass because he's so inexperienced. But, you know, I guess, you know, if he had like a North Turner, he'd be able to do that. But to try to fit a round peg in a square hole, it, 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 it doesn't work. And the early impression is, I think that's what I saw up there on Sunday. It was abysmal, just a terrible loss. I don't think that we've allowed 50 points since 1995 against the Dolphins in a game. That was your match. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable, this team. But where do we place the blame on for this team right now? Because we could blame it on the coaching staff, but then you look at the lack of talent on the offense and someone that's shining in New England, which is Hunter Henry, who we wanted. I was reading the papers in New York Post and New York Times this morning. They're starting to plant the seed here that Joe Douglas is the problem for this team and not bringing in enough talent. How do you feel about that? Do you feel as though that Joe Douglas, the, t- the clock is ticking for him? Um, I don't know if the clock is ticking, but I think by, you know, by the middle to end of next year, if there isn't uh, a progression of the arrow pointing up and there's progress, um, I, I think he could possibly be in trouble. I mean, granted, his first year was unconventional. He was brought in after the draft, but he definitely had time to make a couple of moves. But, you know, he, he struck out a couple of things by bringing in Taylor as a center. That didn't work out. Mm-hmm. Um, his first draft, you know, Beckton, you know, you know, he's shown a lot of promise, but he can't stay on the field. And besides that, you know, Bryce Hall is starting to develop, but. Really, the only thing to come out of the first draft is the punter, <laughs> and, you know. You know, right. and now just if they refuse to play men. And now, you know, this year's draft, you know, the, both Carters look good. You know, Wilson. I, you know, I think, I, I think the ceiling is high for him. I just, I, I don't think they're really putting him in position for him to have the most success and. It goes back to training camp. I, you know, I, I understood the philosophy. Get him as many reps and practice as possible. I get that. But looking back at it, you know, I screamed. A lot of people screamed. They should have had a veteran quarterback in camp. And I honestly, I would have never just given the keys to Zach and said, "Here, it's your job." I would have had. I would have made him earn it. I, you know, I. I think, you know, competition is good for everybody. It is. And whether you're, whether you're the second pick in the draft or you're picked in the seventh round, um, you deserve a shot and you need competition to push you. Mm-hmm. 
And um, I think really what it boils down to is that he was so raw, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I think a veteran quarterback would have beat him out. And I think that's one of the reasons they didn't have one in camp. We got our veteran quarterback now, if you think about it, with Joe Flacco, which we could have retained last year in the offseason, but we didn't. And we ended up giving a conditional six-round pickup to get him back. And we could have re-signed him. Right, well, the pick that I really don't care about, because they haven't proven to really make the most of their pick, so no. I don't really care about a six-round pick. But, um, I mean... If you want to believe what you hear and read, that he wanted the shot to start, um, and that's why they didn't retain him, I don't really, maybe he felt that way, but I would have given him that shot. I would have, think he would. I think he would have beat Wilson out. And once again, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, Aaron Rodgers, um, Tom Brady, and Mahomes all sat. And look how they turned out. Mm-hmm. So... You know, a kid coming out of BYU, um, like I said, I I love the kid. I still think he's going to be really good. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I just I just think he wasn't put in the best position to succeed. No. And we saw the highlights that he had during the Titans game. He was throwing 50-yard passes, 60-yard, 70-yard. That's how we envisioned Zach would play. And he did. He showed out those games. And then you have games such as other ones where he just throws interceptions. But then again, look at the line that he has. The line is awful. Right. Well, you know what? It has played a little better the last couple of games. Um, and then not in the running game because they no, can't he, run the yeah, ball. They can't. It's, the, it's the, horrible. The running game. The running game is atrocious. I think the pass protection has been a little better. And it was evident with, with White, you could see that he did have better, you know, pocket presence and which is really crazy is that you know he was able to get the ball in the middle of the field and I, I think this is a, a problem with Wilson he just doesn't read and see things in the middle of the field and that's why teams are taking that away and if you see, most of his success is re- either to the outside or he improvises and you know he makes plays down the field on himself but when he has to read a defense or he has to throw a slant or a 15-yard intermediate pass, or even, I mean, he's even having trouble just dumping the ball off and running screen passes, and and that that's a concern. Mm-hmm. Something that bothers me about Salah, too, with the coach, if you notice on the sideline when players make mistakes and stuff, he's high-fiving them. I think the fans are starting to get a little nervous about him because he's not the disciplinarian coach that he is. He's just a kind of everyone's friend type of coach. Well, which is true. I mean, I have my concerns about him right now, too. Um, I think the mistake that he made, now, listen, I'm not saying he can't turn out to be a good coach, uh, but I do have some red flags out. But I think the mistake he made was, except for maybe like the offensive line coach, I think one of the linebackers coach, there's really very limited experience across the board with most of these assistants and coordinators. And I think he probably considering that they knew they were going to draft a quarterback. I think he should have had a veteran offensive coordinator and I get it. I know what happened with Knapp, but you know, it's a tragedy, but really if Knapp was the guy, then why didn't they make him the offensive coordinator in the Florida passing game yeah. board? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So to me, he hired his best friend's brother and I think he's got himself in a hole right now and they don't know how to creep out. Exactly. You see it. It's total inexperience on the field, and the fans are starting to uproar over it. One in five. We're going to have another top pick this year, and actually our second first-round pick is going to be even higher, which is great right now because Seattle continues to lose with former Jets quarterback Geno Smith. (laughs) I know. know. Isn't that funny? It is. But once again, you know, know, I I guess, you know, I, I understand Douglas's philosophy, but he's going to be going into his fourth year on a six-year deal. And, you know, how many more years am I going to hear? Well, we got all this draft capital. we got all this cap room. You know, sooner or later, you know, there's got to be an end result where, you know, all this stuff starts to pay off. Yeah. And right now, you know, unfortunately, you know, Zach's hurt. You know, we didn't expect many wins, but we just wanted to see the quarterback progress this That's year, mm-hmm. and we wanted to see the young players develop. 
And with, what are we, seven games? or uh, You're one and six, so we're seven games. we got ten games left. So we're almost at the halfway mark. And I think we've regressed instead of progressed. Yes. And, I, there's and, there's and some serious that, signs that, there. That, that's the most disturbing part. That, that, that really is. You know, a month from now, if I get to call your show, and we're having the same conversation, well, then, then this year's a wash. So yeah. then what happens? Next year, once again, another rebuilding year? Ugh. I mean, really? I remember when we when we had one of our earlier conversations on the show earlier in the year that we expected the Jets to make the playoffs next year. That this year we knew they weren't. This was all about progress for the young players. But now there there are some signs out there and red flags where even fans are pointing out this is worse than gays. People are saying. Well, to be honest with you, uh, I said it myself. Yeah. Because at least with gays, he he won what six of his last seven games his first year. That's right. Okay, um, I, you know, unless there's like some type of miracle, um, I, I don't see that happening this year. No, <laughs> it's horrible. It, this team has become so unwatchable. It's insane. As soon as Zach Wilson went down in the Patriot game, you knew. But Mike White came in there and he threw that touchdown to Corey Davis in the end zone. You thought, hey, maybe this team has a shot. And then we saw what happened. <laughs> no, I did I, I, I mean, to be honest with you, when it was 14 nothing, I knew the game was over. Yeah, pretty much. But, yeah. And, and you know, we with the next three games coming up, you got the Bengals at home. Um, you know, you got the Colts on a short week. I mean, I don't know how they'll really even play a game against the Colts. They had two weeks to prepare for the Pats, and you saw what happened. <sighs> so when they have three days to prepare for the Colts, I can't <laughs> even imagine what that's going to look like. And then they come home to play the Buffalo Bills. Oh. So I know for these, these, these next three games uh, are going to be, I, I think you're just going to have to hold your breath. But with that said, I think this week's game against the Bengals, which completely makes no sense on paper whatsoever. I mean, the Bengals should come in here and light them up 45 to 10. Mm-hmm. But I think this game is going to go down to the four. I, I don't think the Jets will win, but I think the, the Bengals, they, they just blew out the Ravens. They got the Browns coming up the week after the Jets, which is a division game. Then they got the Steelers like a week or two later after that. So this is going to be a classic trap game. I think the Bengals are going to come in here. They figure if they put their uniforms on, they get a win. And I think the Jets might even have the lead at halftime. <laughs> but I, I think the Bengals will come out third quarter, wake up, and then, you know, they'll, they'll put the game away. And the Jets probably lose by about, you know, you know touchdown to 10 or 15 points or something like that. Mm-hmm. A red flag that we must identify, and pretty much everyone has at this point, is that they can't score points in the first quarter of any game. All throughout the six games so far, they haven't scored one point in any of the quarters. It's crazy. Not even a field goal. It, it, it really makes no sense. I, I can't even imagine again another week. And all week, for, for two weeks, I was screaming, the Salah's got to make changes. They're going up to New England, blah, blah, blah. And I said, you know what? If if they win the coin toss, just just do something different. Take the ball. You, you never know what's going to happen. And sure enough, we win the coin toss. He decides to kick, and four plays later, it's seven nothing. And by then, you know, you pretty much knew this is not going to go the right way. <laughs> we did. We we knew what was going to happen from there. But I I know it's way too early. But is there any players that you have seen in college so far? What position would we even go in towards this draft? At least we have the quarterback down with Wilson, but I don't even know where you would even go from here in the draft. Well, to be honest with you, um, you take away the quarterback. I think the the receiving core is just fine. I think they got a good group. Um, Defensive line, I think they're good. So I guess basically... Any other position? Mm-hmm. Tight end. Uh, uh, tight end, cornerback. They, they're going to need linebackers. They're probably going to need a safety. Marcus May is going to be gone. Probably be gone this week if they could find somebody to take him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, really, basically, you know, just take the best available player. But I'm just getting so I'm, – how many years have we talked about the Jets going into the draft? Okay, they have to draft a quarterback and then take the best available players. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many more years are we going to do this? Exactly. I mean, <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't matter who the GM is. It doesn't matter who the coach is. It's just it's constant, you know, the t- 
turnstile of, you know, bringing in players and not get, either getting coached upright or they draft the wrong players. You know, it has to, it, it has to get to a point where that stops and, and they start building in a foundation. And I thought they, I really thought they were on their way to it. But right now it just looked like the coaching staff is holding them back. But I think the coaching staff is really very disappointing at this point. It is. It, it's insane. We, we, you're right. We do this every year. And another thing with Douglas is that he has to make a bold trade here. We need some superstar talent on this team. Can we make a blockbuster move such as getting Hopkins? If we can get someone like Hopkins or even in Buffalo, Stefan Diggs, give up a pick. Not even a top pick. They're giving up low picks for these guys. I, I, I don't think that's in his bloodline. and I but But he probably will eventually when he knows that he's really on the hot seat. And then he's up against the wall. And then what he'll do, like well, when he's really feeling the noose around his neck, if things don't go according to their plans and he's desperate, then he'll spend a ton, like they get him, and he'll spend a ton of free agency. You know, he'll bring in, you know, uh, players and, and whoever wants to come here at that point. And, and then, you know, and, you know, I've seen it time and time again. You know, GMs, they come in. Uh, you know, we're going to build in the trenches, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and then four years later, three years later, it doesn't work out, then they go on a spending spree, and then before you know it, they roll out the door. <laughs> Mike McCagnan with Le'Veon Bell and Trumaine Johnson. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. I mean, I, I, I hope that's not the case. I really hope that w- what their vision is, they get this right, but there's concerns right now, and it's not, you know, it's not beating them down when they're at a low point. It's just, it's reality. It just, it's not a pretty picture right now. No, it isn't. But I would love to see, I was seeing rumors in the papers that the Jets could trade for Michael Thomas. I don't know how true that was, but I would love to bring in a receiver like him. I would love to, or even just trading for Zach Ertz. I would have loved to have him on the Jets, but we don't, we don't get to make trades like that. And that's just not in Joe Douglas's DNA to do that. But I would love to have him a part of the team, but it just can't happen. Yeah, the, the the two the two glaring personnel moves that that stick out to me is that a Shanahan offense. You need a tight end. Mm-hmm. They didn't address it. That's number one. And number two, you know, he's supposed to be this offensive line, you know, guru. What has he really done with the offensive line? <laughs> Greg they Van Roten. Can't, I mean, they can't run the ball. You know, between the guards, they, you know, they they can't run up the middle and. You saw it on the first two plays in New England. It's like Michael Carter ran into a wall. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's crazy. It's like I really, you know, I'm really, you know, I support them. You know, I, I hope for the best. And, but it, it just, you know, it beats you down when you see, you know, game after game. It's just, whether it's the coaching, the players, or whatever, it just, right now, it just, it, it's not good. And they got 10 games to try to get this right. It just, they, they, they got to prove it to me right now because right now I just don't see it. No, I don't see it either. It's insane. And I remember when I texted you about the whole Greg Van Roten, he threw Zach Wilson under the bus in one of his press conferences there at when they lost, saying, that oh, he's got to learn to get the ball out of his hand faster. That's LaFleur's problem because he's not drawing up the plays. And he's just a rookie. This isn't some veteran, this guy. And, and it, he's a big reason why Zach Wilson can't progress is because he's not blocking the players that are in front of him. No, he's not. And, you know, probably, you know what, would it really hurt if they put Feeney in or somebody else to play guard this week? No, no, it, it wouldn't. No. I mean, they have to, they, they, well, they got a new quarterback back there now, so who knows what, what's going on. But um, it's just, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know what the turn is. But, just, you know, when, when my friends start calling me or people I know, and, like, it started, like, two, three weeks ago, uh, well, you're looking at the draft magazines, you're checking out the college games. And I said, oh, I'm just so tired of looking at the draft the first <laughs> week of October. You know, it's just, you know, at least let me get to like after Thanksgiving before I start, you know, uh, focusing on the draft. You know, it's just, it's, I guess it's part of being a Jets fan. Yeah. We don't, we don't even get to make it bef- to Halloween at this rate. We don't, we don't. <laughs> no, 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 we don't. We uh. don't. It's, it's like when was the last meaningful, uh, let's say, November football game that we've played in the last five years? 
it, it's it's been a while. I feel like it Maybe. was a game with McCown. It had to be. That's, it, 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 I, I think it was. I think I either McCown. Or, yeah, because Fitzpatrick. I, I think I, I forget the exact scenario, but I think we were headed down to Tampa at four and five, mm-hmm. and I think McCown was quarterback, and Fitzpatrick was the Tampa Bay quarterback. And I thought I think we had a chance to pull to five hundred at that point, and they lost to a really bad Tampa team and Fitzpatrick. That's probably the last November game that was meaningful. Yeah, and this is years and years and years ago. It's insane. It doesn't get any better, and it doesn't help when ownership goes into the locker room, such as Woody Johnson, because I know he gave Robert Sala the game ball after the Titans win and said that this was the the greatest day in his football career. And I just, I said to myself when watching this on my phone, I guess he doesn't remember the back-to-back AFC championships. Uh, we're getting crazy over one game. Ugh. Yeah, I know. That was, well, you know, it was also interesting. And I mean, I understood why he did it yesterday when he spoke. And the comments he made about Salah and Douglas, the endorsements, and, and I get it because they took so much heat, you know, on, on the radio. But um, really, after like your sixth or seventh game, the owner has to come out and endorse that the head coach and the GM are, in, you know, that their plan is, is good and, you know, that everything's good. I mean, that that's a sad state of affairs when you have to do that after the sixth or seventh game of the year. And he did the same thing with Gaze. Well, actually, it was the other Johnson brother, but we're, this is the same pattern here. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It, it's really, it's, uh, you can't make it up. You really can't make it up. You can't. I, I mean, it, it's such a shame because Jet fans, we never get, we're never allowed to have any anything, any good things come our way here. It's the same thing every year. You can change the, the GMs, you can change the coaches, you can change the players, but it's always the same outcome every year. I like to get away from having a top five draft pick or even a top ten. I want to see playoffs. It's insane. Yeah, the, last, the, the last time I saw the Jets in the playoffs, I was in fifth grade. <laughs> well, I like like you said earlier. I was hoping next year it would be a push for a wild card spot. But but now with Watson, you know, going to the Dolphins, like he's going to be a Dolphin. You got Josh Allen, you know, and. Um, uh, you know, you got Mac Jones in the division. It, 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 it's going to be, it's going to not be an uphill battle. And man, like you know, nothing against Zach Wilson, but you know, you, you got three. It looks like you got three proven quarterbacks already. And you know, where does that leave us? It's yeah. like, do, 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 can I like, can I, can I even like dream of the playoffs <laughs> in two or three years? I, I don't even know if it's possible. <sighs> It's just horrible for Jet fans. And you look at the other teams in New York, the Knicks, they pulled their franchise around. I figured hey, maybe the Jets could. No, we're still stuck in this just abysmal space. I don't know when well, we're going to get out of it. Yeah, I, I wish I had the answer. I don't know. It's just you got to keep the faith. And I know that's really hard to say, but <laughs> um, I'm not sure if Douglas is going to get us out of it. I don't no. know if it's going to be. I don't know if it's going to be a new GM or a new coach. But, I mean, sooner or later, they will. Um, I hope it comes in my lifetime. I hope, I hope it's not going to take I hope it's not gonna take another 25 years before this happens. But, uh, but right now, right now, you know, I, I, I do really feel bad because I know they work hard. They, they give it an effort. But it's just like, you know, you know, you know, the old the old picture of the mouse on the on the wheel just running round and round and not getting anywhere mm-hmm. and it just feels like that's what I've been doing for the last 10 years with the Jets it's like you know you, you just don't you're not getting anywhere no. it, it's you know something we got to get a break somewhere down the line something's got to change yeah i don't know what it's going to take it's the same thing every year and you think it's going to get better you you bring in different quarterbacks and well on the good news i'm sure we're happy that our theory's proven true for have for having sam darnold seeing this him get benched in the game on sunday <laughs> no i know well you know well it's it's well, it's not i mean i was rooting for the kid but with that said you know, in my heart of hearts, I knew he was an average quarterback at best. And that's pretty much what it looks like right now. And, you know, 
it doesn't look like he's really going to really have to develop into what people thought he would be coming out of college. And that's very unfortunate, you know, for him. He's a good kid. I, I wish him well, but it doesn't look like he's ever going to live up to, to the building that he got. No. And I remember when he was winning some games in, in Carolina, everyone said, oh, see, it was the Jets. It wasn't Sam. But yeah, I have all these arguments with people I have on the show. And I just I agree with you. He was never going to be anything. But everyone that was on my show was were, were saying, oh, the Jets should have never gotten rid of him, especially the, the after the week one loss, of course, which we knew was going to happen anyway. It, it, but look what happened now. So it turns out that we were right. We just have to keep the faith, as, as you said, and hope that that Zach Wilson pans out here to be our franchise quarterback. And it's going to take time. It's unfortunate with the PCL injury. That's a setback. But and if you and if you recall, and I'm sure you do, when Sam Darnold got injured when, during the the Gage year, and he had some time on the bench, he played better when he came back from yeah. that injury. So maybe that's Wilson right. and, can and, do that. And, and, and that's what I'm hoping for. Except. I trusted that coaching staff more than I do this coaching staff right now. Mm-hmm. That that that, that it, it, I'm I'm really concerned about the offensive coaching staff. I, I really am. I I, I you know I, I keep on bringing up Lafleur's name. I've been very vocal about it. Nothing against him. I'm sure he's a really nice <laughs> man, and I'm sure I'm sure he knows his football. But he's just he just don't have the experience right. Now. You know, he may turn out to be the next North Turner. Yeah. But right right now he just doesn't have the experience. And it bothers me that they took a quarterback with the second pick in the draft and they, they gave him to an inexperienced um offensive coordinator and Douglas should have known better because he saw what happened with Donald and you know, it's I don't know what happened over there when Salah put his staff together, but Man, oh man, I, I, I would have felt a lot better if there was an experienced offensive coordinator. I agree. And I think Jamison Crowder may be traded at the trade deadline too. I've been hearing about that. We've been hearing the stories. And I would love to for this offense to get Mims more incorporated. But because if you look at it, Mims has pretty much caught everything that was thrown his way this season, even though he's barely been on the field. But there was a a catch that he had against the the Panthers that was impressive. He's been catching the passes that are thrown his way. He's just not given a chance. Yeah, like I said, you know, whether he's burnt his bridges with the coaching staff or not, you know, nobody truly knows. But what I would do uh, going forward, and as much as I do like Crowder, and I think he was good for the receiving room because he's a veteran, um, I think it's time to move on. Mm -hmm. I think you put more back in the slot where he's more comfortable with, and you let him develop a chemistry with either Flacco, White, or when Wilson gets back. And on the outside, you let Mims and Cole split time opposite Davis, yeah. and, and 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 let this offense start start to gel. And I think if they do that, um, I, I think we might see a little better play on the field than we're seeing right now. I agree. I agree with you on that. And Davis, he has to become more consistent. That's something that's been a huge topic for Jet fans uh, as well as the radio stations and just watching him as an analyst is that he doesn't catch every pass that's thrown his way. He'll drop easy ones. And in order to be an elite receiver in the NFL, you have to catch everything that is thrown your way that's catchable. And some of these passes that he'll drop are just, uh, it's just unbelievable because this is an NFL wide receiver. Well, no, I I get it. And I was all for Corey Davis. And, you know, I was all in and, I, th- I think he's a really good receiver. It's just I knew we weren't getting like a true number one, mm-hmm. and they paid him that way. Um, there's a reason the Titans got rid of him. I yeah. mean, let's let's be honest, because of his inconsistency. Mm-hmm. You know, he had a really really good year last year, and I think he's capable of that. You know, if you look at his numbers, I don't have them in front of me. I think he has four or five TV teams. Probably has 400 yards already. So he's on pace for like about a 900 yard year, about eight or nine TDs. And that's what I would expect. But it's the inconsistency in the drop passes. And that's why, you know, he's like, you know, you know, he, you know, a one B, you know, maybe a better number two, but um, right now he's their best receiver. And uh, well, actually I think Moore's is their best receiver, but they're not using him the right way, you know, and uh, Hopefully things will change. Uh, things have to get better. They can't get worse. I mean, you know, you know, it's 
We said that last year. We thought you would think coming off the gaze years, especially last year, it was just atrocious that things would get a little better. But it seems as though we've gone backwards. We've gone backwards. Ugh. Yeah, no, there's, there's no two ways about it. It's like, it's like, you, you, like the rating game last year with gaze. Okay, <sighs> you give me like five or six games like that, and we blow at the end. I, I and like I said, I don't like to lose. But after what we watched so far, I'd be happy with that because we're being entertained for four quarters. Yeah. <laughs> right now, right now at halftime, like I'm disengaged from the game and I'm kind of just watching it and I'm saying to myself, all right, you know, let's go Jets. But, you know, what am I doing here? I could probably do something better with the afternoon. You know? <laughs> I can't imagine the plane rides home. Just you go home every time, um, just upset. It's I feel bad. Right. The, the New England trip was bad home because I, I drive up there and the traffic was horrendous. It took me over five hours to get home. Ugh. And I'm saying to myself, what in the world am I doing? <laughs> you know, it, it just it just doesn't make any sense, you know, to keep on getting beaten down. And, you know, it, especially even with the COVID protocols and the hotels and the restaurants. And, you know, so what in the world am I doing? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> You know, what are you going to do? You know, it's just, uh, you got to stick with it. You got to hope for the best. And, and it's going to turn around someday. I don't know if it's next year, 10 years from now, 50 years from now, but at some point it's going to change. Uh, it has to. There's got to be a, a light at the end of this dark tunnel. And it's, I think the light is pretty far away, but it's, something's got to change here. I don't know what it's going to take because I, I don't know. Maybe they're cursed. I, I have, it feels like a curse to me. I don't know if that's how you feel that this franchise is cursed, but it, it feels like that. A lot of people have said that to me. I already have said they should ditch the uniforms, and I know they wouldn't do it. But I, ever since they went to these new uniforms, it's been really bad football. <sighs> I think they should go back, <laughs> go back to their original uniforms, ditch these, and, and, and start from scratch and uh, and see see where they go from there. But uh, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah. It, it just you know, the schedule, except for the Bills, I mean, I, how about this? How about, I think it's, you know, they play the Bills first. So I think it's November 21st, they play the Dolphins at home. Mm -hmm. But once again, I know nothing about the Watson legal situation and really what's going to be. But there's a probably, there's a really good chance that Watson's going to be in a Dolphin uniform playing against us <laughs> on November 21st. You know, the, and the, the games that we thought the, we could win, we aren't now. <laughs> I know, I know. The one thing, the, the, the one thing I'm really hoping now is that they don't rush Wilson back. Yeah. I don't want him on that field so he's 110% healthy. I agree. You know, mentally and physically. Mm -hmm. 100%. You know, like, you know, like when when the transition period comes, so when Flacco, Flacco, but he starts the cold game, or whenever he does start a game, okay. Um, if they happen to look better and they're playing okay, and they're losing close games, I would let Wilson sit. Yeah, I would just let him sit and watch and learn, and then you know what? At some point, okay, you want to throw him in for the last four or five games of the year, I'm fine. But to rush him back for whether it's the Dolphin game or the Texan game. And just go back to what he was doing. I, I I think that would be a mistake. I think so too. And what if you throw him back out there and he gets injured again, and then he's out for next That's season? Right. Who knows? I That's don't even right. want to That's take right. a risk right now. The this season's over. It, we just have to come to grips with it. it. The season's done from here, unfortunately, again. So now you have to start planning for next year and moving forward with Zach. I think I think you're right. I would just sit him on the bench. Yeah, I would. I mean, but to me, the most important thing right now, uh, more than anything else, is the physical and mental health of Zach Wilson. That's right. And if that means him sitting, if that means him maybe playing a couple of games, whatever they feel is best, but that's the most important thing. He's got to have his head right, and physically he's got to be 110%. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, and let's see what happens here. I... The Bengals game is going to be tough. I, I hope what, what you predicted is true, that you know we, we are actually in the game so that we can enjoy it and, instead of just being bored out of our minds and wasting our time. I, I want to see progression here from the young players, and let's see what happens on Sunday. And they have a short week with the Colts after that on Thursday night. But we'll see. It's 
It's a, it's going to be a long season. <laughs> it's going to be a long season, and you know, with these next two weeks, are uh, you know, not what you know, no improvement. Well, then I think then for the Bills game, I think you know, if anybody has chosen, they shouldn't be allowed to watch the game. <laughs> I think that, that that could be a scary game. But you know, you know, I'm just being sarcastic here. It's, it's, yeah, it's always good to watch the Jets and. Um, it's just, uh, you know, Josh Allen comes into town with the Bills, and if this defense doesn't change, uh, they may not throw up another 50 points on this. Who knows? No. It, and it's insane to think, too, that some of these quarterbacks that we're seeing, we could have selected, such as Josh Allen, but we took Darnold over him. It's, it's always just, it makes you shake your head and just what could have been for this team. But I feel as though if we drafted Allen, he wouldn't be. He wouldn't make a difference for us. There'd be something else that wouldn't work out. So you, you never that's know. Right. That's that. That you know. They, they, listen, the, the best GMs in the world, they all have their share of mistakes. It just seems that um, we're all, we're always on the longer end of mistakes than the shorter end of mistakes. <laughs> but uh, let's hope for the best on Sunday. Let's hope they give us a competitive game. And uh, look forward to talking to you soon. Yes, Ira, I appreciate the call in. You're always welcome on the show. And I want you to enjoy the rest of your week here. Let's go Jets. Hopefully we get some wins here and see some progression. And we just keep moving forward here. I'm sure the next time we talk will probably be probably after the Bills game or whenever you want to call in again. But hopefully we'll have some progression here. Yeah, maybe it'll shock us. Maybe maybe it'll knock off one of these teams. You know, you never know. You That's know. what the NFL. <laughs> you, you never know what's going to happen. So uh, be well, stay safe, and go Jets. Yes. All right, Ira. Take care. You got it. Yeah. Talk to you soon. Yeah. Talk to you soon, Ira.